I don't know if I picked softball or softball picked me. Uh, I was just one of those kids that had to be outside and had to be busy. And where I grew up, it was a summer sport. It was something that got me out of the house and playing. And I just happened to become pretty good. When I came here, I, there was, there was a probably a good 10 years of teams being here. I think 75 was maybe when they first got to actually put on a uniform and got maybe one t-shirt and a pair of shorts. So when I came here, I felt like I was in the pros, even at that time. So Nebraska was always ahead of their time in terms of facilities and things, and then the fact that the women got to play in those um, was pretty spectacular for me. So when I first came here to Nebraska, um, I remember my recruiting visit and in the Coliseum is where we played before they moved over to Devaney. And um, I remember, I didn't have to do this, but when, the, when I was there, the gals ahead of me set up the chairs around the court. So people were setting up the, the facilities and then people could come from the football game with their ticket stub and they can get in for a buck. So that's kind of how they started drawing in crowds. In terms of facilities and equipment, I mean, the glove I came with was the glove I used. Um, the bat that you had was the same bat that you used to clean your cleats was the bat that maybe five people on the team used. And they were aluminum and they were a men's bat and they were heavy. The field was made behind Maple Lee. It was dump dirt. So twice a week we would walk a pattern as a team before practice to pick up stones, nails, anything, glass, and we would just put in buckets. So twice a week we would do that before we'd go out there. Some people, they had to drive to Ballard Field and play their home games out of Ballard Field with maybe people in lawn chairs. They had to drive themselves. Parents would drive them to their games. There was times when the players were actually driving the station wagon or the, or the van to get to facilities. But I, I always felt elite. I still felt elite. You, you were so used to playing for nothing and what, but wanting to give everything. How did you, like when the recruiting process started, because you said, again, there weren't a lot of opportunities, so how did that unfold where you thought, oh, I can play college for this, I can get my degree for this? Yeah, I wanted to play at the international level, and the step at that point was you had to go to college, and you had to go to a top school, you had to go to a program that was competitive, um, and Nebraska was it. I mean, there were a couple other schools I remember coming on my recruiting trip, and it was just like, this is it. Like, I want to be an Olympian one day and this is how I get there. I always knew that I would end up bowling collegiately. This was my goal, this was my dream school actually. Growing up I was like, wow, I wanna be a Cornhusker. So that was always the goal moving forward. I actually grew up watching Husker women's basketball and admiring uh, lots of Husker athletes. Honestly, um, I wanted to leave home. I was a first generation college student and um, I wanted to leave and kind of experience something new and kind of write my own story. But when it boiled down to some um, variables for me, I just felt like Nebraska offered an experience that nobody else could really afford me. I remember getting an email from the University of Nebraska. So we looked it up and it turned out like Priscilla Lope Schleep, she is a former Canadian hurdler. And I was like, oh, I know her, she went to Nebraska. So then that kind of got the wheels turning and I was like, okay, let me give Nebraska a chance, let me go check it out. And as soon as I came here, I was like, this is unlike any other program. I think um, what makes Nebraska special in general is our community. When as a woman, you know, you have other people returning that support of your dream and your opportunity. It just makes it even more impactful. Being from Nebraska, I know what Nebraska is bred, right? Like we, we hear a lot about uh, football and, and other sports. To have that same support returned by your community, I think is, is really, really special. I look at, you know, when I played, we, we packed the Coliseum pretty well, you know, about four or 5,000 people a game. It was tight, it was awesome. I keep saying, people say, why Nebraska? Cause you step out on game day of football and you're like, 
wow, you can't explain it, you just have to be there. And then it was the same thing for soccer, it was the same thing for volleyball, it was the same thing for basketball. To see the Devaney Center filled, you know, from the bottom to the top and kids waiting in line, you know, an hour and a half to two hours for autographs. I had a very unique experience. It, it, it is very hard to put into words, but just kind of being the hometown kid, you know, I was the only kid on the roster from Lincoln at the time. All the love and the support from the community. I don't think you see that anywhere else in the country because you don't see it really at the professional level. I think Nebraska could be an example to literally the whole nation on like how to support women's sports because volleyball games, I remember having to stand at volleyball games because like that you couldn't get a seat there. It was packed, it was sold out. Um, we had people at our track meets, like being a female student athlete here and knowing you have that fan support that is. Uh, yeah, that, that goes a really long way because it shows like not only am I invested in this, but like this community is backing me. Like, you know there's going to be like a little girl in the stands that is watching you and wants to do what you do one day. Like that just gives you a whole other perspective on how you approach your sport. And I think that's so important. Young youth in our community to be able to see young women um, do great things in their sport, but also be able to do great things outside of their sport. Um, and I think it just, success breeds success, right? Like that community of like, we raise them up, we breed them in, you know, bring them in and give them these opportunities. Um, and then it just kind of continues to build from there. There's something about being here and being surrounded by like-minded people where you, when you step into a place and you're like, it feels right. I know the coaches will challenge me. I know my teammates will, will challenge me, but they'll also support me. The facilities, the resources, like, as a soccer player, a female soccer player, when I came to Nebraska, those resources were f available to by few. And to step into here and to see a female athlete be celebrated, a female athlete get resources that the men get, that's when you're like, okay, you know what? I have all the tools here to be successful and if I fail, that's on me. Because everything I've been given has set me up to be successful. All of the resources you have are here and I think, um, like academically, you have all the support you can need. I think with the life skills, like I mentioned before, that was really the catalyst for me to get involved in the community. And without that, I wouldn't have like found that confidence within myself to go out and find my own opportunities. I had every resource I could have asked for to succeed here. If you take advantage of the resources that are here, you will succeed. When I came to Nebraska, I was allowed to play with people that just love to play. And that's what women did. There wasn't a pro league. There was nothing professional, monetary, facilities that why people played. We played because we loved the sport. And nothing gives you more reality check than going into your senior year, realizing there's no professional anything at the end of this, right? Like you have a finite amount of time and maybe your freshman year, four years seem like forever, but as a senior going into your last year, you're like, this, this is what I got, right? Like this is the time I'm gonna make the most of it. So Boise, right, we go into Boise and we're kind of going through the, the different events and I'm just focused on like, I just got to do my part to get the team there. Like at the end of floor, like I had no idea. I had no idea that I had like even been in that, in that case. For the first time in Nebraska gymnastics history, a Husker had won the all around national championship. Ran to my coaches, hugged my coaches. It's still at that moment, it, it's just, it just was surreal. Like, it, I, I don't know how else to explain it other than you're like, it's just the cherry on top of, of everything. People ask me like, what was like the proudest moments for you? And I honestly think winning Big Ten was like the proudest moment for me because it's something I had worked for four or five years. My last Big Ten track meet, I had been like second and third. I had missed the podium. I had been various other place on the podium and for it to happen at the last possible moment it could happen. It's like better late than never. Um, it felt like I really owed my coach that win because um, he had he had given so much for me. It felt like I owed the university that win for like everything it had given me as well. So it was a very wonderful moment. I literally fell to the ground. There's a picture of me somewhere like laying on the track, just like, ah, oh, thankfully. So yeah, it was a great moment. Like we stepped on the field and we wanted to just dominate. We didn't just want to win, we wanted to like make a statement. And I think that's a, that drive and that competitive violence that we were like, listen, we want to do it. And especially at that time, it was before so many other things, but we wanted to do it for ourselves, but we wanted to leave a legacy 
better than when we came into it. And at the time, Nebraska was the bar. So you can imagine being like, hey, how do we leave it better? And how we left it, we were hoping to leave it better was that when people played us, they hated playing against us. But then those in the stands, I remember the little girl screaming in the cold. You know, like you look at them, you're like, hey, I want you to dream this dream and do better than me. I had the opportunity to become a professional athlete after my four years here. And I keep saying, my time at Nebraska helped instill in me the belief, the drive, and then this, this desire to just want to be the best version of myself every single day, whether as a teammate, as a student, whatever it was. And I think that just for the rest of my life, as if I'm dead, but the rest of my journey, it was always about how can I bring the best version of me every single day? And I think that's what's allowed me to be where I am today. Okay, so when you get the news that you're gonna be the NCAA Woman of the Year, what was that, what was it like getting that news? It was very dramatic. So it started out with like, first you find out your Nebraska nominated you, then you find out the Big Ten chose you as like the one of the two Big Ten women. And then they say, oh, you're in the top 30, you wanna to come to Indianapolis for like the ceremony. I was like, oh, that's really cool. Then before the ceremony, you find out you're in the top nine. But then you get to Indianapolis and you're around these 30 amazing women who have like done such amazing things and you're like, wow, I can't believe I'm in this room with them. But you're not thinking that you're gonna win because like they're Olympians and they've like started nonprofits and they've just done like amazing things. I was just in awe at everybody. Um, so then you get to the ceremony and they just call your name and you're like, oh. Angela Mercuria. There's definitely a big buildup, and the first, the only reaction I can say at first is just like, I was purely shocked. Um, Cause they had asked us to, they told every, the top nine to prepare um, like our acceptance speech. And I was like, I'm not preparing anything. Like that's cute, I'm not preparing anything. So I kind of just went up there and said what was on my heart. Um, to overcome all of the adversity we've had to overcome and to still keep fighting through and just claiming our space and knowing that we belong um, on our campuses and in our sports and on stages and on podiums and at the Olympics and <laughs> everything. Um, it's really amazing, it's really inspiring. I'm really grateful to be here. Definitely complete shock and complete gratitude to be there. And, and people see the limelight. Like I, I had the honor of winning a medal for my country so I remember standing on the podium doing the ugly cry. I think people see that but they don't understand the struggle. And that's why I come back to the importance of Title IX. I would never be an Olympian today if it wasn't for Title IX, because I would never have had the opportunity to go to a place that allowed me to be me, that celebrated me for what I was, and didn't try to hold me back because I was a woman or a woman of color. And I think that's the importance of Title IX. It's, it gave women an opportunity to dream big, gave women the opportunity to live a life that actually we didn't even dream, but it, it was true. And then it gave us a platform to do other things. And I, I say this, I wouldn't, the honor of playing in five World Cups, that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Title IX. I wouldn't have become an Olympian. I, I wouldn't be in my job today if it wasn't for Title IX. I believe that sport teaches you life lessons. For women to have that same opportunity to learn those life lessons, and if that's confidence, if that's competition, if that's the drive to set a goal and um, figure out a way to make it happen, um, then, then that's, those are the things that I think Title IX has really impacted. But you know, now I tell my, the girls that I coach to be able to turn the TV on every single evening and see women's basketball being played is just remarkable. Um, you know, you could kind of only do that when I played on Sundays, but for them to have that access every single day is huge. And it's something that I hope they're taking advantage of. We definitely earned this with all the hard work we put in, six days a week, three hours a day. You know, practice is hard, competition's hard. We definitely earn this and, you know, it all goes to, it's all because of the people that came before me and the work that we're putting in currently and it's for our future Huskers, so. It's a piece of legislation for, like, equity and equality that actually worked. <laughs> like, that actually, like, was implemented and did something and, like, you can see the, like, you can, you can walk into Memorial Stadium any day and see exactly what the purpose of Title IX was and you can see that it's working. I think I'm extremely grateful for it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have left Canada without it, probably. I wouldn't like, 
be where I'm, I definitely wouldn't be where I'm at today if I didn't come to the University of Nebraska, and I wouldn't have came here if it wasn't for something like Tyler Knives. Remember the people who did it for nothing. Remember the people who bought their, bought their own equipment so that they could play, who did their own laundry so that that one t-shirt they got was, was, wasn't so stanky by the end of the week. And, and understand that it's a privilege. When I came here to coach, the one thing I really wanted to make sure that we did was honor the past because their stories, they still did it with less than even I had or we had. And so it's really important that we do that because I think that was actually kind of a golden nugget as women who were the first, the pioneers of maybe playing when softball in my instance came up was that that's what we had. That was our golden ticket to become great was how grateful we were, how hard we wanted to play, how gritty we were, and we played for nothing. And sometimes there's something to that what you're willing to ask out of yourself when there isn't anything on the other end other than who you become. From picking up nails and stones and ice on, or, or, and, and glass on Maple Leaf Field to now being at Bowlin Stadium. You know, they maybe had five bats that they all shared over four years and now they get two bats at least for themselves gloves they get their, they get a glove they get four or five pairs of shoes they get so there's all these things and it's fantastic and they do, everybody deserves it everybody deserves it and we want to keep growing that but not at the not at the case where it becomes something that is owed it's been earned and if they haven't earned it yet because they're just arriving remember the people who did